Hello pilots of the internet, welcome to Foldable Flight. My name is Kyle and in this video I am teaching you a fundamental rule for how to make your paper airplanes better. Let's get to it. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that some paper airplanes move through the air kind of like a falling leaf while others soar to the far side of the gym? Well, there are many factors that contribute to the performance of a paper airplane, but the thing almost every new designer gets wrong is the placement of the plane's center of gravity. That is right, if you learn this one principle on how to correctly place the center of gravity on your paper airplanes, it will dramatically improve their performance. And I know many of you are thinking, I don't even know what the heck the center of gravity is, and that's why I'm about to define it for you. The first thing you need to know is that every object has a center of gravity. An apple, a vase, a boot, and yes, a paper airplane. The center of gravity for a given object is essentially its balancing point. Let's take a look at this block. We could theoretically balance it on a tight rope if we position it so that half of its mass is in front of the rope and half of its mass is behind the rope. And congratulations, we have found the center of gravity. Just kidding, it's not quite that simple. Making a line where the block was balancing on the rope, let's now rotate it 90 degrees. You can see that we can balance the block on the rope this way too. So let's mark that line and rotate it one more time. As we balance our block on the rope for a third time, we now also have three lines. And it is at the intersection of those three lines that we find our center of gravity. Now that we know what the center of gravity is, it's time to ask the question, why is it important? And to answer that, I've conducted a quick experiment. Here we have five very simple paper airplanes. For the blue plane, I just folded the paper in half and then folded the wings. For the green, I folded the top layer in half one more time. For yellow, I folded one more time than green. And for orange, one more time than yellow. Red, one more time than orange. You get the picture. And you can see that the leading edge gets both progressively narrower and progressively thicker in terms of how many layers are within it. Folding the layers forward moves the center of gravity forward. So we have five planes with the same wing shape and area but all with different centers of gravity. Now in just a second, I'm going to show these planes in flight, but I want you to pause the video and vote now on which plane you think will fly best. I'll give you guys a few seconds to do that. Okay, let's go. You can see that the blue plane and the green plane struggle to create any kind of forward momentum at all. That means the center of gravity is way too far back. The yellow plane flies fairly well, but has a tendency to climb and stall. The orange plane flies even a bit better than the yellow plane, and then the red plane dives toward the ground. You are now witnessing the importance of properly placing a plane center of gravity. So let's grab the orange plane and see what we can learn from its success. Using the balancing method, I took a moment to locate the center of gravity for the orange paper airplane. And then I did a bit of math to calculate how much of its wing area was in front of the center of gravity and how much was behind the center of gravity. Here's what I learned. About 29% of its wing area is in front of the center of gravity and 71% is behind it. Having run this experiment, I became curious about the ratios on my existing paper airplane designs. So using the same methods, I ran calculations on a bunch of my planes and I was really struck by what I found. Swallow, 27% of its wing area is in front of the center of gravity. Empyreon 1, 25%. Plasma Z, 25%. Invictus, 25%. Circuit Racer, 24%. Onslaught, 25%. Stratus, 25%. Marauder, 23%. Zoomerang, 26%. Honestly, the consistency is astounding. Of the planes I checked, I had only one outlier, Arrowhead, which has only 19% of its area in front of its center of gravity. So I became curious about other people's designs as well. So I grabbed two of the best planes in the world. Sky King, the world record holder for longest time aloft, and Suzanne, the world record holder for longest distance flight, and I tested them. Suzanne had 23% of its wing area in front of its center of gravity, and Sky King had 25% of its wing area in front of its center of gravity. These are fitting the narrative perfectly. Now I'm not claiming to have arrived at some secret formula where everything is centered around that 25% number, but I did find this consistency to be extremely interesting. And really quick, don't let all of these numbers intimidate you. You don't need to run the tests that I'm running here in order to properly place the center of gravity on your paper airplane. It's actually a really intuitive process. If your plane has trouble generating forward momentum, or has a tendency to climb upward and stall, its center of gravity is too far back. 
If it has a tendency to dive, the center of gravity is too far forward. Keep in mind that planes will fly differently at different speeds, so a plane that dives when thrown gently may fly quite well with a harder throw. A plane that glides nicely with a soft throw may climb and stall with a harder throw. So to some degree, the proper balance of a plane also depends on how you would like for it to be thrown. So, let's say that when you throw your paper airplane, it climbs and stalls, or struggles to generate any forward momentum at all. You know that the center of gravity is too far back on the plane, but you're not sure how to go about fixing it. There are a couple of ways to go about this. The first is one we already talked about when I was testing those rectangular planes. Just fold some layers forward, and you'll move the center of gravity forward with them. Another easy way to move the center of gravity forward is to fold the nose of the plane down. I know this seems a little counterintuitive to move layers backwards, but reducing the wing area in front of the center of gravity is another way to effectively move it forward. As long as you don't fold the nose too far down, you should be good to go. One more way to move the center of gravity forward is to fold the top edge of your paper down before you even begin folding. Now I find that it is far less often that I design a plane where its center of gravity is too far forward rather than too far backwards. And if I do design a plane that wants to dive slightly, my first inclination isn't actually to move the center of gravity, it's to bend the back edges of the wings slightly upward. This gives the plane up elevator. Now if you don't know what that means, I'm leaving a link to a video in the top right corner that will educate you on how to properly throw and adjust your paper airplanes and it'll tell you all about this effect. But basically by bending those edges of the wings upward, you encourage the plane to climb and will counter its tendency to dive. But if you do find that you really need to move the center of gravity backwards, it's not very difficult. Just fold fewer layers forward than you currently have in your design. Problem solved. And with that, I have taught you all you need to know in order to properly place the center of gravity on your paper airplane. So get out there and get folding. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you are interested in more paper airplane content, click that subscribe icon in the top right corner, click that bell notification icon, and you can see some more of my content scattered across the screen here. If you really like what I do, head over to foldableflight.com or patreon.com foldable flight. As always, I will see you guys next time.